of what our mission and vision means uh, to us here in Coffee County. So our mission is destination graduation for college career and life, and our vision is an equitable and excellent education for every student. And uh, we have a video, is that correct, from Coffee Middle School for tonight? And my daughter told me she's an eighth grader, something about some kind of circus thing they're doing or something in the middle school, so I'm not real sure. What there we go. There she is. There she is. All right. The greatest show, greatest school on earth. All right. Thank you, Miss Barry. This is the moment you've waited for. You've been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. 
And buried in your bones, there's an ache that you can't ignore. Taking your breath, stealing your mind, and all that was real is left behind. Don't fight it, it's coming for you, running at you. It's only this moment, don't care what can gather. Y'all feel a dream, can't you see? Getting closer. Just surrender, cause you feel the feeling taking over. It's fire, it's freedom, it's flooding open. It's a picture in the pulpit and your blood devotion. There's something breaking at the brick of every wall, it's holding all that you know. So tell me, do you wanna go? Where it's covered in all the color lights. Where the run away is a run of the night. Impossible comes true, it's taking over you. Students to develop enthusiasm 
um, for and to get them to write, um, and to provide a context to celebrate their writing successes and to recognize student achievement in the arts and the academics. And there are, there's a series of competitions. There's the school competition, then the district, the school district, then the RISA district, and then the RISA district winners go to the state. And tonight I want to recognize first our county winners, these are our school winners. <clears throat> um, each school um, submitted several winners from their, um, from their school and then these winners are the county winners for the district. So we chose one for each grade level. So as I call your name, please come up and get your certificate. Camry Carver from Indian Creek, and her writing was titled The Story of the Girl and the Statue. And if her principal and teacher, Miss Lexi Wiggins, will please stand. Here she comes. All right, Cambry, congratulations. Great job. Right, and you can come stand right up here. First grade, her writing was titled The Owl from Nichols Elementary School. And if her principal and teacher, Christina Hutchison, will please stand. From second grade, <coughs> Jordan Ballet, um, her t story was titled The Day My Snowman Came to Life. And if her principal and teacher, Ms. Sonia Daniels, will please stand. Principal and teacher, Ms. Sonia Daniels. Our third grade winner from Westside Elementary, Ty Allen, his teacher, Ms. Amber Dovers, and principal, please stand. The Spider Boys. There's a lot of creativity in these writings, I assure you. Our fourth grade winner, Jolston Dean, from Satilla Elementary School, and his writing was titled, Saving Melkabob, and his teacher, Ms. Takeda Wilcox, and principal, please stand. Our fifth grade winner from Westside Elementary School, Molly Mills, her writing was titled, Beautifully Imperfect, and her teacher, Ms. Summer Brugman, and principal, please stand. I just smile at <laughs> Moving on to the middle school, our sixth grade winner, Jamie Hutchison, and the story was, the writing was titled, Davy and DeVoe's Defeat of the Hossenbola Gang. <laughs> Our seventh grade winner, Madison Reese Jones, and her story was titled, Our Love is Blind. Teacher Denise Steptoe and Principal <laughs> Our eighth grade winner, Rosie Lawson, her teacher, Shannon Stuckey, and the title of her story was Thoughts. Our ninth grade winner, Muscon Menhaus, and the title of the story was Malayla and Anne Frank. Teacher Simona Watts and Principal Mr. Mars, I don't think they're here. <laughs> ninth grade winner, Netra Gandhi, teacher Darcy Tootin, and the title of the story was Not the Typical Home. And Principal Mr. Rowling has Dr. Rowling. some of these boys and girls who were RISA district winners. The first grade RISA district winner was Olivia Lenzo from Nichols Elementary School. The 
fourth grade RISA district winner was Jostin Dean from Satilla Elementary School. And the sixth grade RISA district winner was Jamie Hutchison from Coffee Middle School. And as I said earlier, the RISA district winners go on to compete in the state competition. And we have one honorable mention at the state level, and that is Jamie Hutchison for sixth grade. If you guys will let's, let's get together and we'll take a picture. Can I take the key? So we can get our stay for a little bit. Let's take a picture. And if you guys will let's She comes into school every single day with a smile and excitement for learning. And she plans to give that back to our community, become a teacher. She's been
soils capacity, we want to present the advanced ed report, the SACS report to the Board of Education and to the public. So, uh, <coughs> Ms. Miller, if you want to come forward and formally present the SACS report. So, our um, district went through SACS advanced ed, February 24th through the 27th, um, earlier this year. And accreditation is pivotal to leveraging <coughs> education quality and continuous improvement. They use a set of rigorous standards to evaluate us, uh, the school system on. They look at the program, the culture context, and the community engagement of stakeholders to determine if the parts work together um, to meet the needs of our learners. So there's three. They use the set of rigorous standards to evaluate us on these three domains, leadership capacity, learning capacity, and resource capacity. And below that, you can see the red, yellow, green, and blue. That is the rating scale that they rate each one of the standards within the domains. Um, needs improvement, emerging, meets expectations, and exceeds expectations. So the first one you can see is leadership capacity. This is um, the ratings. You can see the ratings and you can see that we, all, we have blue and green on all of these standards, these 11 standards within this domain. An institution's leadership capacity includes the fidelity and commitment to its purpose and direction the effectiveness of governance and leadership to enable the institution to realize its stated objectives, the ability to engage and involve stakeholders in meaningful and productive ways, and the capacity to implement strategies that improve learner and educator performance. So you can see that our school district rated very well in leadership capacity. Learning capacity. Here we have two emerging, and the, the other 10 are meets expectations. An effective, effective learning culture is characterized by positive and productive teacher-learner relationships, high expectations and standards, a challenging and engaging curriculum, quality and comprehensive support that enable all learners to be successful, and assessment practices, both formative and summative, that monitor and measure learner progress and achievement. Then the last domain is resource capacity. And here you can see of these eight standards, we have one emerging and the rest are either meets or exceeds expectations. Instant institutions ensure that resources are distributed and utilized equitably so the needs of all learners are, in ad are adequately and effectively addressed. The utilization of resources includes support for professional learning for all staff. The institution examines the allocation and use of resources to ensure appropriate levels of funding, sustainability, organizational effectiveness, and increased student learning. So this slide shows the findings. And there's three different levels of findings. The initiate, which were priorities for improvement. The improve, which are opportunities for improvement. And the impact, which are effective practices. So you can see that we have three standards, and I've listed those there, that are opportunities for improvement within our school district. The learning 2.2, the learning culture promotes creativity, innovation, and collaborative problem solving. 2.9, the system implements processes to identify and address the specialized needs of, of learners. And 3.5, the system integrates digital resources into teaching, learning, and operations to improve profession, professional practice, student performance, and organizational effectiveness. So those are the three standards out of all the standards that we were rated on that are opportunities for improvement. All the other standards that we were rated on, I didn't list them out, but you can see there's, there are a lot. We have effective practices. So we are quite pleased with 
the, the good things that we knew were going on in our system and that this team of the engagement review team also saw um, going on in our system. So um, advanced ed index, ed, index of educational quality, IEQ, they give us a rating at the end of the review. After the engagement team, review team comes and spends the days that they spent here in schools, interviewing, doing observations. It was very extensive. Um, this is the rating that we, we received, 335.16. And you can see that the international average is between 278.34 and 283.33. This is on a scale of 1 to 400. So you can see that we have a very high rating. Um, the, the report says that an IEQ score below 250 indicates that the institution has several areas within the initiate level and should focus their improvement efforts on the initiate level standards. An IEQ in the range of 225 to 300 indicates that the institution has several standards within the, the improved level and is using results to inform continuous improvement and demonstrate sustainability. An IEQ of 275 and above indicates the institution is beginning to reach the impact level and is engaged in practices that are sustained over time and are becoming ingrained in the culture of the institution. So that's exactly what they saw. They saw lots of things going on here that we've been sustaining over time and that are ingrained in the culture of our school system. So we were quite pleased with our advanced ed report and our score um, it's really good um, so for next steps review and share the findings with stakeholders and we've done we're doing that tonight um, develop plans to address the priorities for improvement identified by the engagement review team and we know there are three standards and we are well aware that those sort of or concerns that we already have in our district. So they, they also saw that. Use the findings and data from the report to strengthen the continuous improvement efforts, celebrate the success noted in this report, and continue the improvement journey. So we have lots of good things going on in Coffee County. We think we see it on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's great to have outsiders, especially a team of educators. We had our review team consisted of six people, six educators, one from South Carolina, two from Florida, three from Georgia. So they were teachers, administrators. Um, the lead from South Carolina, she has done these reviews throughout the nation um, in the United States and in other countries. So um, they were very complimentary of our school system. They were very complimentary of the um, the engagement that we had with our stakeholders and they just could not say enough good things about Coffee County. So we are quite pleased with our report. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you, Ms. Miller. I would echo everything she said. It was an excellent report. <coughs> for our principals who are here, thank you for what you have done to, to get our schools to the level that they're at. They went on and on about how excited they were about what's going on in our schools and I think that's an indicator of what the teachers are doing in the buildings and what the, the uh, custodial and the maintenance and the food service and the bus drivers and the secretaries and the pair pros and the administration and the teachers and everybody that's working in the buildings doing so thank you to everybody that works in our schools for an excellent review uh, this is a five-year review so we will be up for review again in 2000 and 24 I guess so uh, we do have a strategic plan a five-year plan that we are working on they were explained this plan in detail and their recommendation to us was to continue to work our plan and continue to carry out the things that we have in our plan uh, they talk about grows and glows we got a lot of glows. Really, they're only grow uh, when they in the exit 
interview was to work your plan and sustain the good that you have going and try to get better. So it was it was a very good review. We were very excited. And they were very complimentary of our Board of Education and the leadership that you provide and the community. They were very complimentary of the community members. Uh, this room was full on the day that they came and interviewed community members. And, and we'd like to thank all the folks who were involved with that, who came out and, and were part of that process. So, Thank you to everybody. I think it speaks well of Coffee County. So thank you. I'm going to need to pause just a moment in the agenda. I'm going to need to take care of something. All right. That's the advanced said SACS report. Next item up is the consent agenda. We have our minutes that were presented in the, the work session prior to this meeting. I would make a note that we presented in the work session the joint meeting of the Coffee County. Uh, County Commission, the City, and the Board of Education. We presented that as a meeting of the Board of Education. We're going to take that out of the minutes and, and not notate that as a meeting. We did not have a quorum there. We had two board members there. So since we did not have a quorum, I don't want to ask the board to approve that as meeting minutes. All right? So we'll take out the joint meeting of the Coffee County Commission, City, Board of Education since we didn't have a core. Do we need to add the buses on that? Well, we, we presented that for approval at the May 7th meeting. Okay. There's really no rush okay. for that. Uh, Buddy's aware of the order and he's, he's taking steps to be prepared for the order. So following in the tradition of if it's nothing that needs to be rushed, we'll ask you to approve that at the May 7th meeting. The uh, financial report that was presented in the work session. <coughs> would be in the uh, consent agenda for approval. Out of state travel, we have the one trip in JROTC. Performing Arts Center, a bid for the data cabling, security cameras, and wireless access points of the low bid of $43,678. And the custodial services, RFP, we're asking the board to approve BEC janitorial services as a service provider and to give the superintendent uh, authority to execute a contract with Beck for custodial services. That is the consent agenda. Are there any questions? All right. Any discussion? Mr. Preston, you weren't at the working. Do you have any? No, I, I was able to review everything. Okay. I appreciate y'all through the work session. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> All right, with that. All in favor? Very good. Thank you. All right. The monthly uh, personnel of the lease list. I'm not supposed to go back into the executive session. All right. That's all right. We have a motion to go back to the executive. Second. We'll go into executive session and discuss personnel. All right. We will set a date to the yard. Well, we'll do that after. We'll do that after we come out. 